to this computer. All right, so today it's going to be me and Yanni, and we're going to do a pre-recorded video, and uh, we're going to do it about baptism, about baptism for salvation, and digging into actually what that means, and what's the right way and the wrong way of what people say, and um, just just going to get into this. It's a pretty fun study, but um, thank you, Yanni, for joining us. Greetings and blessings, 14ers and the rest of the Christians around the world. Let's go, Mike. <laughs> All right. And I, I found this interesting and, I, and this, this was weighing on me the other day because there was a, a few people that say, you know, you must be baptized or for salvation. You have to do like a there's like a Marcus Rogers says, unless you're baptized, um, you know, uh, you can't be saved. And, you know, there it is true that there you must be baptized to be saved. Right. But it's not what a lot of people make it out to be. And we're just going to do a study. And this is how I, I would, you know, this is how, you know, we like to study. And this is how I would suggest to everybody study when people make claims uh, that you get into the word and study and pull it apart. You know, don't listen to them. Get in the word and, and pull it apart for yourself. And this will be a good way you guys can see and then learn if you have questions. This is called eSword. I have three eSwords over the free program opens. And it's a King James Version with the with the the, the Greek and Hebrew. Uh, uh, what is it? The blue. What do they call it? The Septuagint? In it. Yeah. Yes. So I can look up what the word meanings are. You could dig in, find deeper meaning. Um, do you have anything to say, Yanni, or no? And also, Mike, try to discern, right? The, because some scriptures seem to be con contradicting to each other, but it's not, right? Because mm -hmm. there is a baptism, like Nicodemus referring with water, but Acts 2.38 has nothing to do with water, right? It's just the baptism. So it's like yep. a so, spiritual. Exactly. And uh, see, Speaking of John, well, we'll get into that later. Hold that thought. Let's not let's uh, we'll get into that one before we end. But let's just start here. So I have on the left here and hopefully this is big enough for everybody to see. This is Luke. Uh, this is Gospel of Mark in the middle and Matthew is on the right. Now here um, we do see a lot of teachings on the differences in the Gospels because there's no contradictions in the Bible, except the Gospels are when they have differences in them. It's because a lot of times it's for prophetic and future events coming and it, they're speaking to different groups. Like Luke is speaking to the bride of Christ. Mark is speaking to, uh, we call them the sleeping church, those that claim to be Christian, but that are name only, don't read their Bible ever, uh, you know, and follow the tr traditions of men. Matthew's written to the Jews, and they don't believe that Jesus came the first anyway. They don't believe in Jesus. Uh, and so you'll see things written for that group. But that being said, let's just start here with her. We're looking at John the Baptist prepares the way, Luke, Mark, and Matthew. All right. Now, one of the things that you see here uh, in all three of them, you see this. Uh, I'm going to start in Luke 3, 3. And he came into all the country about this John the Baptist. And he came, John the Baptist, into all the country about Jordan preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And it says, as it is written in the book of, of the words of Isaiah, the prophet saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make, make his path straight. Right. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways be made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Right. Then he said unto the multitude. And I'm reading Luke a little bit long here because this section, this part's coming up here. It's only in. Uh, well, it's similarities, but there's something that's only in Luke here. Um, and he said, uh, then he said unto the multitude, come forth to be baptized of him. Then he said, uh, excuse me, then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance, and begin to say not within yourselves, we have Abraham to father. For I say unto you that God is able to, to is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Right. And he's and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth forth not Fourth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people ask, saying, what shall we do? So th this, there's a group here that's only in Luke that asks him, what shall we what shall we do? And this is talking about fruits worthy unto repentance here. And a lot of people say, you see, this, this is talking about works. Works like you have to work to earn your salvation. But that's not what's being actually spoken of here. And we're going to look at uh, two other um, witnesses in, and that Paul speaks of, which is talking about bringing forth works you know uh as fruit for repentance but let's let's look at this and he, what do you see uh john say to them 
He says, he that had two coats, let him impart one. Like, give, give. Don't be greedy. If you if you borrow money, don't borrow, don't pay back, uh, don't expect, or if you let somebody borrow money, don't take what's more than, uh, you know, what you borrowed back, right? He's saying, you know, if you give, just expect that back with just a little usury on it, right? Don't do this great usury. So he's telling them, you know, to be fair, to be just, right? Um, and he says to the soldiers, what do you say to the soldiers? Do violence to no man, right? Uh, you know, don't accuse falsely. Talk about police or these things. Be just. Be just to your decisions. So he's teaching this group, right? But in Mark, you don't have this group. Nobody asks, what shall we do? In Matthew, they don't ask, what shall we do? So you'll notice that in Luke, you'll see a lot of things. This group's always asking questions. They're always studying. They're always seeking. They're always searching. Mark and Matthew, it's contradictory there. They don't do this. What's well, not contradictory? It's just because people aren't sleeping church isn't searching. Matthew is searching for Jesus. All right. So we see anyway, we see here, let me go back up. Uh, we see baptism of repentance, right? Luke. Then we go to Mark. Mark 1 8. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So he's talking about the one that cometh after him, right? Uh, Mark 1 4. Uh, you know, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. That's three. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So we have repentance here for the remission of sins, right? Baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So at this time also, you, you're going to say something, Yanni? No, no, go on. I want okay. to ask a question later. Okay. Um, so we see this type of shadow, this baptism in water. We know he's baptism in water for the remission of sins. But why? Why 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 at this time? Why do why do we see this, right? We see this baptism of, in water for the remission of sins. Because this was this outward manifestation, right? And it's a work because the Holy Ghost had not yet come, and we're still at the time of the Jews before Jesus, right? Before the church age, that they did this, right? So I would say if you were to die during this time period, right, having went to bat John the Baptist and been baptized, right, but you died before Jesus' time, you would have still went to paradise. Right? So again, we have Mark 1 8. He says, I baptize you with water, but he that baptized you with he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Now let's go to uh, Matthew real quick. Matthew so three Mike, three. Oh, go ahead, Mike. One question. Let's say this baptism of remission of sin. It's like they like they were doing the the burnt offerings to the temple, right? There was not so just like what they were doing these offerings to for the remission of their sins the whole year. But now exactly says you, can, you can be baptized to me. Don't have to slay the sheep and also an offer to the Lord, right? Something yes. like that. Yeah. Because it's type and shadow. John the Baptist is this type and shadow. Of Jesus coming, it's he's preparing the groundwork. He's laying the foundation, but the true foundation, he's well, he's making the way straight for the Lord, right? So you're going to see that what he brought was one thing, but Jesus brings the much better, right? Okay, he's a, he's a transition between you know the temple of the of Solomon's temple, right, where they yes. did the sacrifice, and Jesus being the final sacrifice. Okay, okay. exactly. All right. Um. So let's look at uh Matthew three three. Um. He's the voice of one crying in the wilderness. You know, this is the same part. Uh, make straight. Uh, make the way, prepare you the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Let me go down to Matthew 3, 6. Uh, let's see here. And we're baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. So you see this, this group going there. There's people being baptized of him, confessing their sins. Then what does he say to them? You know, oh, you do have this. He says, he saw many Pharisees come to the baptism. He said unto them, O generation of I, who has warned me to the wrath to come. But they don't ask what to be do to be saved. But he tells them to bring forth fruits, uh, meat for repentance. Now we keep uh, – and you see here, and he says this thing also, Ma uh, Matthew 3.10, and now also is the axe laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree with bringing forth not good for you is horned down and cast into fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, comma, and with fire. Now, before we get into this comma and with fire part… I want to hit this part on bring forth uh, fruits worthy of repentance because what he's doing, he's not telling them they have to do work, right? He's not saying do this to be saved, but what what is he doing? So let's go look at two places where there's uh you know, or three places where there's two other witnesses, three other witnesses, right? Which is telling us about what's, what's going on. So we go look at Hebrews um, uh, 10, 24, right? Hebrews 10, 24. He says, uh, this is Paul, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Now, when you see this parenthesis or this colon here, the next sentence is just adding on. It's an addition 
to this, right? So there's this, then this is adding on more to what's being considered here, right? Um, so it's bringing these two topics together. Then what's he say? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so the much more as you see the day approaching. So what's he saying? He's saying, hey, let us provoke one another to good works. So what is John the Baptist doing? He's provoking them to good works. Do works worthy of repentance, right? So what is that? It's not like a bad thing. It's like, um, you know, it's like me telling, uh, it's like Yanni or, you know, people griping at me, Mike, do a video. We want a video or Alan, do a video, you know, and they're telling us that it's not like we're trying to earn something, but they're, they're helping provoke us to do good works because this is a work for the Lord that we take joy in, right? That's my, that type my, of shadow going on. Go ahead, Yanni. Yes, Mike, that's quite how we see the other Christian YouTubers, right? We are provoking each other to do good works. That's why, ah, this guy went live and he's doing this teaching. Let's do another teaching, right? We are provoking each other in good works. We have, it's like a good sportsmanship, not any antagonizing each other. Yeah. Uh, just, just, to pro, just to give a motive to the others to do exactly. good works. Uh, and one more question, Mike, one more question mm -hmm. about this uh, works of repentance. For example, can question, right? Can we say about Zacchaeus, right? Zacchaeus was a tax collector. When he met Jesus, what he said, I'm going to give back what I have stolen, right? What I have taken three times more. Mm -hmm. was, could that be considered like a, a work of repentance, right? See, yeah, he tried that's to... a work. Exactly. That's a good work. That's not like something I'm earning my way in, but that's no. like, I'm saved by the grace of God. I have the Holy Spirit. You know, at that time, they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them. But I mean, I, with Jesus right there, I'm sure you felt the Holy Spirit. He was happy. He was excited. And, and he was there. He, and he right. tried to, to undo the wrong that he was doing before he meets God, right? Before he meets Jesus. Like, oh, understand now I was doing something bad. Let's go and, and repair it. Exactly. Restore it. Because he, yeah, exactly. He wanted to do that out of the kindness of his heart. Not to earn something, but because he knew that was that was pleasing to God. All right, so let's look at First uh, Timothy six eighteen. Let's uh, we'll jump at seventeen. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high minded, nor nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Now that when you see this, it's a semicolon, but this is this is like colon, but it's still adding on. This part is adding on to them. So he's charging the rich in this world and people that are high minded what that they do good that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Right here, it's still going. So when you see this, we're still adding on to what's being talked about to the rich here. This is a charge to them. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called which some have professing have error concerning the faith, right? So, uh, you know, don't worry about science and, oh, you know, millions of years old or vain babblings, um, uh, be genealogies, all that stuff, or should have bought a hundred, but I bought a Kia. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> Mike, Mike, we see in this 618, there, see, he tells them to be willing to communicate. Communicate mm -hmm. means to be sociable, right? If you go to the world, of course, it's liberal, but it's a society, right? The sociable. Mm -hmm. Because the rich people probably didn't talk to the poor people, right? They didn't even look at them. They didn't even start a conversation with them, but right? they didn't even communicate with them. So it's like, well, uh, start communicating, right? Start being sociable with the others if you are rich, yeah. right? So think about this too. This is, uh, you know, this is fighting the good faith, the good fight, right? But also think about in that way, right? Be sociable, willing to communicate. So as a, as a, as a, somebody that teaches or discusses the word of God, right, or likes to bring it forth, be willing, questions. be willing to communicate. Paul tells us, you know, be be ready to give an account at, of all times, right? So be ready to give that account. So this is be be ready to distribute, willing to communicate, right? So um, don't be high minded. I right? don't think you you have all the answers in the word, right? Because the more you read, the more you learn. Um, don't be a snob right because exactly we, we, know, we know alan has sent so many you know emails to all these pastors online right to, and not and few, very few of them they 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 get back to him right they got back to him they they mm -hmm. answered to him they thought the others were not willing to communicate just to give a fair you know whatever mm -hmm. uh, study exactly and the, the final one it says this is titus three fourteen. let us and let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary for necessary uses and that they be not unfruitful 
here you go. It's the hold. So what what are we seeing here? We're seeing this um, to bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. So when we see the one crying out in the wilderness, when he's saying bring forth fruit worthy of repentance, um, there's a change. There's something he's telling him to do. There should be a change. You should want to go out and do good for the kingdom, right? So we see this. Now let's get into this. We're back into the baptism. And in, uh, this is Matthew 3.11, right? He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, semicolon. But so adding on, we're still, he's saying this is what he did, but there's a but. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, still going. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Now, comma, and this is a separation. So there's a baptism with the Holy Ghost. And it's talking about a baptism with fire here. However, however, look at the semicolon here. He's going to add on. There's my, not my, two baptisms. There's just one. Well, there's one my, for my, those that are in Christ and one for those who's not in Christ. But go ahead. There's a delay. I think on, we cannot see the scriptures yet, right? There's a delay on the scriptures. So you, you're still pointing to, ah, okay, now it changed. Okay. Yours, yours might be slow on the screen. Okay. Share. Okay. 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 All right. Um, Okay, so we see uh, he shall be baptized you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. But what is this with fire? Well, semicolon here. It's, we're adding on. It's going to tell us whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire, right? So his wheat that's been gathered into the garner are those that have been baptized with the Holy Ghost. But those with fire are those that are burned up with unquenchable fire. So there's no two baptisms. You don't get baptized by the Holy Ghost and then get baptized with fire, right? So that there's a common teaching out there that you see a lot of these charismatics doing. They're like, fire, fire, and people are falling out, going crazy. There's, n there's none of that in the Bible. There's none of that in the Bible. If you can't find that or see that in the Bible, then you, you should be like, wait, that, does, that, that doesn't make sense. What you talking about, bro? Right? You should – these are the red flags that should, you should pop up. They're like, let me go, let me go bring it back to the word, right? So anything that anybody, we test the spirit by the word of God, right? So when people go out and say stuff, you got to bring it back to the word. So there's not two baptisms, but this baptism right here with fire to talk about is those that are going to be burned up with unquenchable fire. And, so and that's, that we, Mike, go ahead. that's Mike is a big misconception in the church, right? Many people are asking to be baptized by fire. It's like they're asking for God to send them into hell, right? That's exactly. crazy. That's crazy. It's like people are begging not to be saved, but they don't know what exactly the verse are meaning, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Exactly. And it, you see in Mark here, too, we see John preaching the baptism of repentance for remission of sins. So th there, John is preparing the way, and he's saying, be baptized with water for the remission of your sins, right? And then bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. Now, that's like the, the groundwork to what the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus did to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. But now let's let's read this though. Let's let's keep going. Let's go to Mark. I'm gonna go to Mark 2:17 real quick. And, and Mike, since we are talking about baptism, it was John the Baptist that was preaching. Let's say the baptism at first, right before 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 anyone else. Why wouldn't he he say to the disciples to, to his followers? You have to be baptized by fire. He knew it was wrong, right, to baptize them by fire, right? But because he was, let's say that the first one that was baptizing and he said mm -hmm. about baptized by the spirit and uh, the water not mm -hmm. fire he didn't even use any fire the word about fire exactly so mark 2 7 i was just pointing this out this is jesus talking they that are whole have no need of physicians but they that are sick i came to call not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance so we see he's he, jesus is here we all know this is about sinners to repentance but um let us let us keep going here uh, let us go to Acts. We're going to jump into Acts real quick, and then we'll come back to uh, Luke, Mark, and Matthew here in a minute to uh, to dive in out. Let's go to Acts. We're going to go here. Acts 1. Yes, because in the book of Acts, there are many baptized. The baptism, Mike. Exactly. So we see Jesus here. This is Jesus speaking in the beginning of Acts before his ascension, right? Um, For John truly baptized you with water, but... Ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So what he's saying, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence, right? So we got this this baptism. When you look at this word baptism, it's it's an immersive submersion, right, to dip repeatedly. But 
but what is it? It's almost like there's there's this change going on from water to something else. And we're going to look at it, right? We're going to look at if if you must be baptized to be saved. But but the truth is, you must be baptized to be saved. You have to be baptized, but it's deeper than what you think. But let's keep going. So exactly, Jesus is Mike. saying, yeah, See, there, there are two elements: water and spirit. So it's like we are changing element during exactly. baptism. That's exactly cool, Mike. right so but uh, mike mike one question when people say holy ghost is fire they are wrong right they're, they're wrong see, now they they are trying to connect the baptism by fire with the baptism by holy ghost but no, but no maybe no. the holy ghost is fire at the at the end when he will punish let's say the anti the beast so then yes the holy spirit will become let's say fire to burn them right but now well, not. well we know the holy ghost right is jesus is the father right the three are one right so however it's going to go God's going to speak at the end and the spirit's going to go out and however that's going to work, whatever, however, we're going to get to see it right where the world's burned up by fire that's coming, but that's well at the end after the millennial reign anyways, but let's keep going here. So we see Jesus saying baptized with the Holy ghost. Now let's go to acts 13. I don't have time to hit them all. There's so many we can hit, but let's just go. We're acts 13, 48. Now let's let's go here. This is Paul. Look at Paul and Barnabas. I'll start in Acts 13, 46. Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you. To, right? But now this is you, the Jews. But seeing you, put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, not accepting Jesus. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many, right here, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Okay, now we have a believed here. There's a belief, all right? And they're saved. We, we see this group believe and saved. Now, a whole lot of words going to come together here in a little bit. You're going to start to see them baptism, belief, repentance. They're, they're going to come together, and it, it comes together perfectly. But let's, my, let's keep – go ahead. Like one question. These people mm -hmm. that they were – as were ordained, they were predestined. Mm -hmm. that, that means, right, as were ordained, they were predestined. Let's say that's why they believed. Yeah, you could say that they were – some were predestined before the foundations of the world, right? To believe, to 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 be to be have to be the part of the bride to escape everything, right? Um, and others were not predestined, but they will be saved, I believe, in tribulation. That's another story. I don't want to get into that one yet. All right, so let's look at uh, uh let's go to I'm, I'm gonna jump out of Acts real quick, and we're gonna start talking about this this baptism real quick. We're gonna go to Ephesians four five Ephesians four five all right unto the body we're gonna, we're gonna start with ephesians 4 1 i therefore the prisoner of the lord beseech you that you walk worthy to the vocation wherewith you are called with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit even as you are called in in one hope of your calling one lord one faith one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So uh, everybody's given a gift according, is, you know, some people have uh, a greater faith, you know, some people, you know, search, seek more. So God rewards them more richly, right? Seek me. Search and you'll be given. Ask and it shall be given you, right? Um, but when not, that's not like a, when they say ask and it be given you. Prosperity evangelists like to say that, um, you know, ask and if whatever you ask, if you believe it's done, I want a million dollars. No, because he tells us you ask for things you don't receive because you ask for flesh of things. This is talk about asking accordance to the will of the Father, praying according to the will of the Holy Spirit, right? What is what is God's will? So ask in accordance, Lord, please help me to understand more. Please help me to grow more. Please don't let me be led astray. Please help me to grow in wisdom, to grow in knowledge, to grow in understanding, to grow in discernment. These things, if you ask in faith, not wavering, it will come to you and he will give it to you. But you got to do your part by seeking and asking and seeking and get into the word, right? Which is what we're doing here today. So Exactly. Mike, Mike one, one thing. Ahead. See, these people were given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Gift in Greek, this Greek word means 
donation. See, it's like a donation. God is donating his gifts, let's say, to the to his to believer. But other people can get a bigger donation. Can some people can get a smaller donation, right? A smaller mm-hmm. gift, a bigger gift. Everybody has to be grateful, whatever they got, right? Whatever, because you know, God knows. Like he says, according to the measure. So God knows. Mm-hmm how and when and how much he will donate to each one of us exactly it's a donation right he's a donor jesus christ is a donor he's doing donations okay it's free he's, he's the ultimate blood so, donor <laughs> exactly and, and you don't and, and, and donation you don't determine the, the, the you mike that you receive the donation you don't determine right the donor is the one that he's willing to give as much as he wants right he mm-hmm. can give one thousand he can give one million it's yep. his donation you don't have a saying to it. You just it, receive it and you have ex- to be grateful. Exactly. But the great thing about that is, right, is if you come to him and ask for more, he'll give you more. And if you come to him and ask for more, he'll give you more. But, uh, okay, so we got here one baptism, right? Now let's go ahead and I'm going to jump into, let's get into uh, what what is the baptism? What is the baptism? Because you got to be baptized to be saved. But let's go read what is baptism. And Romans there's two witnesses that tell us what what it is. Let's go to Romans six and let's go to Colossians. Uh, I think it's Col- Colossians um, two, two. Romans six what? Yeah, Colossians uh, Colossians six one to fourteen. Love it. It's always always we always got the number seven fourteen twenty one. I love it. Right, God's repeating numbers and themes I always always catch in my studies. But uh, then we got Colossians two. Um, and it, we'll get to this. So let's jump into Romans 6 real quick. This is dead to sin, alive to God. What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Oh, wait, wait. We got the, what was the baptism? The baptism is becoming clear now, right? What is the baptism that we must be baptized, right? So he's saying, shall we sin more so that grace may abound? Shall we keep on sinning so that we can show the grace, how gracious God is? No, because those that have been baptized with Christ, that have been buried with Christ into his death, right? Therefore, we are all buried with him by baptism into his death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, planted together, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin, here it is, guys, the sin might be destroyed. So what do we see? We see the old man dying. The, the reason for baptism in Christ, why to get rid of our body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin, meaning we are no longer a slave to sin. We are no longer in, entangled by its grasp. We'll still sin. We'll still fall short. We'll still be – we'll still have these temptations, but we have the, we have Christ in us, greater who greater – who is greater as he that is in us than is in the world through Christ in us, we will overcome this sin and we will bear no more than he deems able, right? We will bear because the only way you're going to grow in salvation, grow in, excuse me, uh, grow in your walk, uh, sanctified, you're going to, like, how do you get stronger? Well, he's going to test you, right? You're going to get broken down to get built up. Just like with muscles, you work out, they get broke down to get built up. Your emotions, your every, every, you want to grow in the Lord, you want to get stronger, you want to get, be bolder. Well, he's going to test you to help build you up. So you're going to come through these manifold temptations, but he's going to get you through it. Know that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but he that liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be freed indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God, as those that were alive from the excuse me, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are under excuse me, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So what is this, guys? What is baptism? What is this baptism talking about? 
Why? What? What baptism must we have to be saved? It is the baptism unto Jesus Christ, where we are buried with Him. We are taking part in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of our sins, so we could be freed from our sins, so we can go home to the Father. Because that is the whole purpose that Jesus came to resurrect, the, to free us from our sins, to get us back to the Father. Right? All those who accept the free gift, right? That His blood, Jesus shed blood for us, is what makes atonement. And it was all about getting rid of our, our sin. You must have remissions for your sin. All right, but let's go look at the second witness now. So, so Mike, go ahead. one second, right before we move on. See, slave in sin means you are serving sin. We don't serve, we don't want to serve sin. We want to serve Lord Jesus Christ. See, if you are slave to someone, you are serving him and you're providing some uh, work for him, right? That's why we are dying with him. But one thing that Mike it's from my personal experience and other Christians are doing, let's say, sometimes wrongfully. They remain dead in the grave. They don't resurrect. You die with Jesus, but you stay there dead, right? Until, you know, many time passed, right? Some years maybe passed until you understand that you have to rise with him also sometimes, right? Because it's a three-step, let's say, process, two steps, right? You die with him and you resurrect with him. So maybe some people are stuck in the first step, right? They are dead in him and that's it, right? They think that's that's the end of the gospel. No, you have to rise again in him to serve him. Exactly. And that, that's where repentance comes in. And repentance is not what you think it is, right? Not you, Yanni. I know you know what it means, but, you know, but no, what no, is no. repentance? My, my personally, when I came to Christ, right, I felt death, right? That was, mm -hmm. let's say, my, my, my username, right? My, my nickname back then. It was death because I... I was feeling I was dead, but I didn't rose up. I didn't rise up with him right? until years later, right? Until I study more and more and more and more. But I thought I stayed in the grave for many years. Right? Yeah, I, I would have said I was, you know, dead with Christ. You know, you asked me five years ago, ten years ago, and then <clears throat> that would have been it. I thought I was I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, I believe in that. You think you are serving the Lord, Mike, but yeah. you're still in the grave, right? You don't <laughs> serve him because you haven't come out of the grave. Yeah, it's like you are staying in the in the shore and you don't go for swimming, right? You stay and you look at the sea. Yeah. That, no, you have to yeah. swim. It's like you look at it's like you're having a coin, right? There's an A and B side, right? And you're like, ah, oh, I'm only going to do A, but people don't realize that the coin. There's one coin and there's two sides of it, and they're the same thing. That both sides are are the same. You have to have both to get the one coin. If you want that coin, there's two sides of it. So there's two things that you're partaking of at the same time. And remember that that uh, that or analogy or metaphor. All right, but let, there's let, no let, value. There's no value in the coin, right? If it's only one side, right? The, the, the uh, coin go. doesn't have any value. There you go. That's a good point. All right. Yeah, I like that. All right. So let's that, go to that's Colossians why some two, people, maybe, So that's why some people maybe Mike they are doing works, but they are unfruitful because maybe they are all they have stayed in the grave, right? They haven't resurrected. So it's like what they are doing. It's like the works of dead, right? Because you are exactly. dead. You or they're doing it for the wrong reason, right? They yeah, they do the works for the wrong reason. Yeah. Um, yes, you okay. Think, you think you serve God, Mike, but you are not serving Him because you are still in the grave. Right? You uh, think, right? Yeah, because you're doing it for yourself or for your own gain, right? You're it's for your glory, for man's glory, traditions of man. You're following that, right? Yes, and you know to to be forgiven by your past sin, right? Sometimes Christians they want to you know to be punished because they want to be exalted for the sins, but the sins are already forgiven. See, they and we have this wrong practice of christianity sometimes right until you come to to your senses and in the scripture exactly the scripture. so go uh, on. all right let's go on let's go to colossians now 2 6 <clears throat> as ye have therefore received christ jesus the lord so walk so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving but lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Here's your Trinity verse. Trinity is not in the Bible. Yes, Trinity is not in the Bible, but rapture is not in the Bible is anyway, but Harpazo is, which is a snatching way. That's the rapture. Godhead, the fullness of the Godhead. This is your Trinity verse, right? Anyway. Uh, and you are complete, complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. We're still going. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen in him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. 
and you being dead in your sins and the, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So what do we see again? Look, look at the, all the sections. Buried with Christ in his baptism, taken part of the crucifixion, right? That through the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are baptized with him. We are raised in new life. New life. Why? So that we can be dead to our sins and forgiven, blotting out the handwritten of ordinances against us, all our sins. The whole point. So what is it? baptism into christ jesus why for the remission of your sins again we got to be baptized for the remission of our sins it's telling us right here buried with him in baptism it's not saying you're not buried with him in the dunking of the water you're buried with him in the baptism it is now a spiritual baptism that has taken place by the holy ghost right so this has to happen so once your sins are forgiven and you become a new man then something comes inside of you to dwell. All right, let's let's keep building this all together now. But getting my, back, my, wait, hold that thought real quick. Okay, actually, go ahead and say it because I'm gonna jump real quick. Before you continue, see Colossians two seven. It talks about <laughs> Thanksgiving, right? Up ah, the the feast of Thanksgiving that is coming right in the next days, right in the next. And what you see in the verse two eight, after the tradition of men. See what we have tomorrow. The Thanksgiving, it's a tradition of men. No, we want to celebrate Thanksgiving to God, right? Mm -hmm. the tradition of men. So tomorrow, guys, if you're listening, the Thanksgiving is always to God, right? And then yeah, to men. To in all things that we do, right? In all things that we do, give thanks unto God, right? If you're out, you know, if you if you're if you got to play a game, you know, give thanks to God. If you got to walk your dog, give thanks to God. If you got to go to a birthday party, you got to go to, you know, uh, you know, a, a Christmas party, you know, if, and you got to eat birthday, you got to eat cake and ice cream. You got to eat all the pie and all the things. Give thanks unto God because it's for him. You know, all this stuff was made. He knew we were going to have it. He knew we were going to do it and we get to enjoy it. So we give thanks to God. But so and we ahead, see, Michael, this, all this new feast, right, that people are doing celebrations. It's all they came from the Bible. They came from God. So they twist the Bible and they do this manly human uh, feast among them right to celebrate among them exactly yeah not to honor each other not god but it's all so, come from god all the feasts that we do mm -hmm. in these modern days so uh speaking of the tradition of men right so in the beginning i told you guys that uh you know if anybody's new that luke is written to the bride of christ marks to the sleeping church those that don't read their bible or you know in name only and matthews to the jews why uh interesting enough only and i told you in luke this group's searching and seeking. How you saw in Luke, there was only um, uh, you know, the guys asked, you know, what shall we do? And they gave him an answer, how to how to, you know, how to be better, how to bring forth these fruits. There was no question like that asking Mark and Matthew. Also, in Luke, there's a, there's sections that are in Mark and Matthew that aren't in Luke. And here's one of them, speaking about the traditions of men, the ones that follow the tradi traditions of men. Well, let's look at Mark real quick, and we're gonna come back to the baptism. It's gonna get to the Beth part, but I want to show you guys this real quick. Um, Matthew 20, 15, 1. Only in Mark and Matthew do you see this section called the Traditions and Commandments, right? Um, and God's telling them, he's saying, let's, let's, you know what, this is kind of a big section, but let's just read it. You know, let's just read it. And uh, uh, so you can see, you can see the differences. Well, how, how Jesus and, and all, when you compare all the differences, right? When you, then you line the stories up, you're going to notice in Mark, that Jesus always berates this group saying, why do you not understand? How, why is it you don't read, right? In Matthew, he always says things like, how is, it, how is it that you don't understand? Or how is it that you lack understanding? Because the Jews were given the Torah. They should know these things. Mark and them don't know these things. And I say Mark as in the church. They don't know because they don't read. They don't search. They're like in name only. You know, go, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I go to church every year, you know, on Christmas. I do my stuff. But that's it. It's shallow, right? Or – they search and they seek, but they actually prop up a man and they follow this one man rather than following the Bible. So they listen to everything he says. And when he says, hey, you got to be baptized in some water to be saved or you're going to hell. Um, they're like, oh, this is it. I got to do it. So they're believing man over God when it's the other way around. We're forsake all and follow after Christ, carry our own cross. 
But Mark's group doesn't do that. Matthew's group doesn't do that. So let's let's read a little bit. Um, uh, let's see here. Matthew, uh, Mark 7, 6. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So it's all all about their feelings, all about their their uh you know their their dreams or interpret their visions, you know, about what they think or what they feel. It's not about what the word of God says. You know, it's like, oh, uh, when they talk about oh, I can't believe I watched a video the other day where it talks about casting out alligator spirits and gorilla spirits and mice spirits. And it, it's horrible. Uh, this where they where people believe this and follow this and it's growing. They're growing, but that's what God says, right? Uh, people are you're gonna see the word of God, the truth, the true word of God is gonna shrink, but all this lies and deception is going to grow for tickling ears people want their ears tickled but anyway so let's keep going they laying aside the commandment of god and you hold the tradition of men as the washing pots and of cups as many of us other such things do you do and he said and he said unto them full well you reject the commandment of god that ye may keep your own tradition for moses said honor thy father and mother and whoever is cursed thy father or mother let him die the death but ye say, if a man say to his father or mother, it is Corbin, they say, a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be set free. So what this meant is like when they say Corbin, like this is back in the day, this is a, a, Jew, a term for the Jews. They would be like, um, oh, mother, father, I can't take care of you because all that I would have used to take care of you, I gave it to the church. Therefore, I'm free of you now. So they use this word to get free so they don't have to take care of their parents, right? They don't have to honor their mother and father. They kick them to in a, uh, you know old folks home and never go see them. Not saying anybody does that. If you do that, I'm not saying you're doing that, but it's just, you know, God saying we're just take care of our parents. And you suffer him no more to do aught, excuse me, and you suffer him no more to do aught for his father or for his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your traditions, which you have de uh, delivered as many such things as you do. Now, this is the same thing. He says the same thing in Mark Matthew, and he, and he yells at them, uh, you know, berates them for that. And you go down here to what defiles a person. This is only in Mark, and this is only in or excuse me, this is only Mark, and this is only in Matthew, right? Uh, and he's talking about, um, uh, you know, what goes inside. You know, they're saying eating, drinking, these kind of things. Uh, you know, what you eat, you know, uh, doesn't defile a man. It's what comes out that defiles a man. What comes out of a man is what the heart is. What comes from the heart, not anything you eat, does not go in and affect you, right? This is what it's saying. But look what he says in Mark. Are you so without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entered to the man, it cannot defile him because it entered in, not into his heart, but into the belly and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats, right? Um, and he, he explains to them, right? But see what he says, you'll, you'll always see this in Mark. It's always a beratement. You don't see this beratement in Luke ever because Luke is the bride of Christ. These are searching, seeking. You know, he reminds them of their faith. It's always gentle to loose group. Mark, nope, they're berated. Matthew, the same thing. When you go down to what defiles a person, look what he says here. Um, a blind leaders, blind right here. Are ye also, this is Mark, uh, Matthew 15, 16. Are ye also yet without understanding? Do you, do not ye yet understand that whatsoever? So he's asking, why do you not understand these things? You have everything Moses wrote to you, but they don't follow it. They take the traditions and the commandments of men. They don't go off the word of God. They go off the word of vision. They go off the word of prophecy or they go off the word of what they call the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of Satan, right? Because they are the father of the devil. And they, they prophesy things and they do all these things that's contrary to the word of God, right? You, and I just wanted to point this out. And there's another one, which is also to another section, which is also perfect because it's only in Mark and Matthew. But we'll get back to that in a little bit. But now going back to let me jump back to Colossians so I can, you know, just again, I just want to um is the Colossians here. Uh Colossians. Mike, two. I repeat that the 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 search screen doesn't work for me. I don't know what the others are seeing, but Okay, uh it just give it a second, it'll catch up because when it's recording, it's recording mine like actively. It's just the share screen is just internet buffering for you to see. Um but let me get back to uh, Colossians. You'll see it in the middle here, pop up in a second. Um, so what is it? What is he saying here? Right? It's about being buried with him in baptism. So we see this baptism, right? For what? So that our old man can die and we can have the newness of life, so that our sins can be forgiven. Again, Colossians 2, right? Colossians 2, 6 through 
uh, you know, 15. Then go to uh, uh, Romans 6, 1 through 14. Um, what is it? The baptism of Jesus Christ. We we're baptized into his death again. Baptism into his death. Why? So that the body of sin can be destroyed, that we can no longer serve sin, that we can serve Christ, that we can provoke each other to good works, right? What was what was John the Baptist doing? Repentance of sin by water, but provoking him to good works. Now we have the better Jesus Christ, the sacrifice by blood, by his blood, the perfect blood, the only, the only begotten son of God, right? Who is God, fully man, fully God, who came down, lived the perfect life, died for our sins, right? And it's a free gift given to us that we should be baptized and crucified with Christ in the death, burial, resurrection so we can rise in newness of life. Baptism in Christ. Now, now let's go back and look. Let's go back and look at these things and we're going to see all of it come together perfectly. Now let's look at Acts 20, 21 real quick. And I love this because Paul, summar uh, Paul summarizes perfectly. He's testifying both to Jews and also to Greeks. Repentance toward God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. This is how you are saved. Repentance toward God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. What is faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ? This is believing on the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, being baptized with him. When you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, when you have faith in the death, burial, resurrection, when you come to the cross, truly the foot of the cross, cross and seek him and understand who he is. And yes, you are repentant of your life. You are coming to him of because godly sorrow worketh true repentance, right? Unto sorrow. This repentance is the moral, com moral conviction, right? Compunction that you turn toward God. So faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ is how the death, burial, death, burial, resurrection, you believe on him. Repentance toward God. What is this? This is a relationship with God. This is you turning from your old life because you believe on the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. You believe what he did for you and you want to walk with him. So you are now turning from your old life, walking toward Jesus, right? You are wanting a relationship with him. How do you do a, keep a relationship with him? You get to know him. You visit him you know, daily, read his word. As you read his word, you understand the things that he wants you to do and he doesn't want you to do. So you stop doing them, right? You're like, oh, I shouldn't drink like this. I shouldn't be a homosexual. I shouldn't do these things because it's unpleasing to God and I want to live a life pleasing to God. So repentance toward God faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's go read right, Acts, right. Acts 2.38. Hold on, hold on. I got to keep going. I'm on a roll real quick on this. All right. Yeah. Acts 2.38. Then Peter said, this is Peter. Peter and Paul, they all have the same gospel message. It is not different. Peter just went to the Jews. Paul went to the Gentiles. But it's the same message. Peter said unto them, repent. Turn to Jesus. Have a relationship with God. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Uh, Romans 6, Colossians 2. We believe we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We take part in the death, burial, and resurrection. We are baptized into his death. Why do we do this? Must we do this? For the remission of your sins. Because if your sins are not remitted, you cannot get home to God, our Father. And then what happens after you do this? When the old man is dead and the new man comes to life, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. God now seals you, comes inside of you, kicks out all the bad stuff, any kind of demon, demonic attack or oppression you had, kicks it out. He is the strong man. He cannot be bound. He cannot be loosed. He is there as long as you have faith in Christ and Jesus, right? The only thing we must do to be saved is to believe and to keep faith in what Jesus did on the cross for us. Now, let's keep going here. Well, go ahead, Yanni. I know you wanted to add something in. You're no, muted. I don't want to make a joke, Matt, but I want to say this. Uh, what Sometimes what the New Age religions say, you, in order to find life, you have to go through death. Mm -hmm. See, they know you have to die in order to find life, but they don't say you have to die in Christ and rise in Christ. But the, because they know this concept, how you get life through death, this is the paradox, right? The oxymoron of, of Christianity. They use it in their own advance, right? But they don't mention Jesus Christ. So, exactly. 
They know, guys, in order to go you know, in life, you have to go through death. And that's how, in order to go to, he uh -huh. to, he to heaven, what they say, right? In order to go to heaven, you have to go through hell, right? See, it's like they play with the words, <laughs> but they know yep. this concept. Yeah, that's why we have our Greek brother in here. He's deep in the word meetings. All right, so yes. Acts 2.38, go ahead. See, I want to say about this remission because I tried to find the, the Greek word remission in Ephesus, right? Remission means abandoned. It's like uh, you are discharged, right? So you are not, you are freedom of sins. Of yeah, course, exactly. Forgiven. That, that, that debt we have, that, that debt we have incurred, incurred, right? At Colossians 2, it has been wiped clean by what? The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. We cannot forget the blood. The blood is what we must have because without blood, there can be no atonement of sins. Jesus Christ, a perfect God, perfect man had to come to earth to die for us, being sinless, right, to wipe out our debt. Otherwise, it could not be wipe, wiped out. Now, yes, let's Mike, go, so, and go you, ahead. You become free from sins, not, in the, not only the past sins because right, it's a continuation. Right? It's like you are not longer ruled by sins. That, of course, that doesn't mean, right, just like Paul said, going out and sin, right? God mm -hmm. forbid, right? But you are not ruled by sins. You are free from sin. So, of course, anyone in his mind can translate it as he wants, right? So, yeah, I will leave it up here, right? But you are free from sins. And I want, and I want to say something after you finish, Mike. You know, uh, Colossians two fifteen. I want to something about well, Colossians two fifteen. Right. But write it down. After, write it down. Don't forget it. Yeah, write it down. Don't forget uh, it. All right. All right. So now we're gonna look at what people butcher, and this is where it comes into place because they lack understanding and they don't want to search and seek it out. So they say this and then, um, and then they, they don't understand the power of God, right? Or they add works to it. It's because they're either A, they're deceived or they're deceiving or they're not children of God, right? Or they're lost and they're going to go through tribulation to wake up and repent and realize that they've been foolish and that they shouldn't have been a teacher because teachers will be judged and held to a higher standard. Right. Um, and you're responsible for the things that you say. Um, but let's read this. Let's look at Luke, Luke 24, 47. This is the Great Commission. OK, this is um, this is at the end right now. Again, notice the differences between Luke, Mark and Matthew here. Right. There's pr a progression going on. First, second, third, Luke's group does not go through tribulation. Mark's group goes through tribulation. Matthew's group goes through tribulation in their seals and in trumpets, right? So um, a whole nother study. But when you, if you really get intrigued by the differences in the Gospels and you, when you start to see these differences um, in my playlist, I do a teaching on the differences of the Gospels. Uh, they're kind of older ones. I need to revamp them and do a lot better. It's like when I first started teaching. But um, anyways, uh, let me get back to this. So Luke 20, 24, 47, he's saying unto them, uh, let's go to 46. Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance, excuse me, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. So turning to Jesus, believing on the death, burial, resurrection should be preached for the remission of sins. It's the same coin. There's one coin, repentance and the baptism or faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the same thing, right? Because when you have that faith, you are being baptized with him. It's the same coin, and they go together. You cannot separate one without the other. If you are have repentance toward God, it's because you are wanting to walk a life pleasing to him, and you believe in Jesus Christ, right? And you have taken part of the baptism of Jesus Christ, right? Look at this. Should be preached in all nations. Right. And all these things, you are a witness of things to come. Right. Behold, I will send the promise upon uh, of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Right. Acts 2.0 is going to play out, dude. In tribulation, there will be this time period that goes out again. Uh, you're going to see it. Uh, Jesus says there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, the thing that has been done, he will do again because the Lord does require it. This will play out. We've done this over and over because the gospels speak to it like crazy. The spirit of prophecy is in the testimony of Jesus Christ, Revelation 19, right? I can't remember what verse, but what is the testimony of Jesus Christ? Well, the gospels is the, the biggest testimony, but the whole Bible is a testimony, but the gospels really show some amazing revealing things and the differences speak to different groups because there are no contradictions, but let me keep going on to this. Now, now let's look at Mark 16, 16, what a lot of false teachers like to claim, right? Uh, let's see, Mark 16, 15, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Now, why doesn't it say he that believeth not and is not baptized shall be damned? Or why does it not say he that believeth but is not baptized, he shall be damned too? Why it doesn't say that? Because it doesn't have to. Because when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in the death, burial, resurrection, and you have faith in his blood, when you have faith in Jesus, you are baptized in his death. So when you believe, you are baptized. And if you don't believe, you're not baptized, so you're damned. He doesn't have to repeat it twice because he's saying when you believe, you're baptized. And if you don't believe, well, guess what? You haven't been baptized in the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, you are damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. They shall. We cannot do this now. This is prophetic. This is supposed to be here. Yes, the apostles did it, but this will repeat itself in tribulation, right? Um, uh, or, and we have a lot of. Oh, you just have to. I'm sorry. Let me keep, just keep going. That my this this is this will happen again, but this is not for us. When people claim this and they say, look. You got to speak in tongues and you're not saved. That is because they lack discernment. They lack the Holy Spirit. Or I, I don't I don't even know. They're just so off. Now let's look at Matthew real quick. Therefore, go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them. Now it's no longer preaching, guys. It's teaching. Why? Because at the end of Matthew, Jesus is with us always, even until the end of the world. Yes, you can say he's with us now, but no, this is talking about when he's feet down on the Mount of Olives and the thousand year millennial reign begins. Go out now and teach all nations, baptizing them now, what? In the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all the things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. What's the end of the world? Well, that's when the millennial reign's over and this world's destroyed, the, this world and this, the heaven and earth are destroyed and a new one comes, right? That's why it's only said in Matthew. Matthew to the Jews. Matthew's also the trumpet. Seven trumpet is what's talking about right here. We have plenty of teachings on this, um, but that's why there's differences. It's, it's a progression. Um, you have like this worker group going out, 144,000. You could say this is the 144,000. Um, this is uh, the apostles or the teachers at the end, like the, the gates. Uh, I'm not, I won't get into that, but that's what's going on here. But let me keep going now. But you're like, wait. All the people in the Bible, they were saying, oh, when they believed, they were baptized. Were they baptized with water or were they baptized with something else? Let's go read now, but let's try to discern what's going on. Let's see if we could just pick some stuff out real quick. Let's look at Acts 11, 16. Right? Was it Acts 11, 16? I think so. Then, then remembered I the word of the Lord, how he spake, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Uh, this is Paul remembering this. Let me see here. Uh, I think this was just a verse I was supposed to be see. Acts. Yeah, this. OK, again, this is just uh, Paul remembering, uh, you know, about what I think it was Paul. No, this is Peter. I'm sorry. Oh, see, here's Peter. Peter saying this. Um, he's remembering that. Um, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, right? Not with water. Hmm. For so much then as God gave them the, the light gift, as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Right here again, it's Paul is agreeing with Paul, Peter agreeing with the gospel of Paul, because it's the same. Now let's go to, sorry, Acts 19, 4. Now look at this. This is Paul in Ephesus. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. They spoke in new languages. This isn't, I should have bought a Kia, but I bought a Hyundai. This isn't that. This is actual. This is glossia. This is a known language. What, what, what did you say about my mother, Mike? <laughs> I, I, I got what you said, man. I, I, I can. I can. <laughs> oh, and they prophesied. What is it? They prophesied? Uh, okay. Prophecy, by the way, is twofold, right? Yes, they can have the ability to bring forth divine uh, knowledge from God, like a, a gift, like a word of knowledge, like saying, hey, God said this is going to happen in the future. But it's not talking about that. This is talking about 
they were able to bring forth divine inspiration, right, to predict, to prophesy. They could prophesy from the word of God. It came through the Holy Ghost is on them. They understand the scriptures. They are able to prophesy and draw out what the meaning of it is, and they are prophesying the word of God, the divine inspiration that was God given. The, you could say the books of Moses. They were able to prophesy now on what things meant. Right. This is what's going on. And they could speak in new tongues. They could go out and they could preach the gospel to edify. They could it, the, the whole point of speaking in tongues is that you could preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to somebody that couldn't know it. Right. The all the ends of the earth. Paul said it was going to be preached to all the ends of the earth through Paul. This is what's going on, that they were able to preach to all the ends of the earth. But now wait. But now it's saying they were baptized. This is saying they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But what does Paul say to us? Let's go to First Corinthians. Four. This is where we use some discernment and just build. First Corinthians, I think is it six? Six, six, I could be wrong. Uh what you know that you do 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 no. Or is it one? You see one. Okay, yeah, it's one. First Corinthians one thirteen. This is Paul speaking, right? Because they're arguing, right? Let me go to uh let me go to actually one one eleven. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren. By them which are of the house of Chloe, that they are contentions among you. Now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? What, what is Paul pointing it back to? To be baptized in Christ, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's pointing them back to this. I thank God I baptized none of you. Wait. Wait, Paul just – wait, didn't we see right here where – Paul says that um, they were baptized. Oh, wait, but he didn't baptize anybody. Who baptized them? Jesus Christ. The death, burial, resurrection baptized them. All Paul did was lay hands on them, right? Right? And then what happened when they, they believed? The gift of the – they were forgiven of their sins, and the Holy Ghost came down and dwelled in them. And at this time – signs were for unbelievers right so this is when the foundation was being built this is why you see a lot of miracles and stuff because the foundation had to be laid the foundation's laid and done now we have faith in the finished work of christ we have faith unseen faith right faith is things hoped for and of blah 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 unseen i can't remember the exactly what the scripture is but y'all know what i'm talking about okay so let's go on so they so, so believed Mike. on jesus and were baptized right they were baptized. What was the baptism? I already explained it. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You go back here. So, so what does so he say? Mike, Let me finish this real quick and go. And he says, "Let and I, he goes, I thank God I baptized none of you. But he says, but for Crispus, Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any of you. L look what he says here. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made none effects. What is he saying? I preach Christ crucified. I preach the gospel. When you believe the gospel, when you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are baptized in the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. Therefore, you have repent remission of your sins, and it's all Guess what? Repentance toward God, faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ, baptism, believing, that's all one piece. It's all the same thing. All of it's together, right? And if when you truly believe, you have all of it. That's why, again, in Mark 16, 16, it says, if they that believe not are damned. Because if you don't believe, you're not buried, you're not baptized in Jesus, you don't have repentance toward God, you don't believe. And that is, I think that I think that it should be good for uh, for baptism. You know, I think uh, hopefully you understood that. Hopefully you, you found this a blessing. I hope you know this made sense. If you think I'm wrong, uh, you know, no problem. Then you you could comment away and say uh, how I clearly misunderstood scripture, and that's fine. You know, I'll read it and um, pray on it, and we'll we'll go from there. But I believe I showed clearly what baptism is, and in that Paul wasn't about dunking people in water. It's about baptism in Christ Jesus. Um, what do you want to add, Yanni? Mike, first of all, you forgot the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. See, you oh, I was going to go there. I was still going to go there. At the exactly. End. But before we go there, see, 
Paul says, I didn't baptize in my name. So, of course, Paul doesn't even mention water. Right? So, probably Crispus, he throwing, he's throwing under the bus Crispus and Gaius. Probably these two people were baptized people in their own name. But I, so what means baptize someone in your own name? You become the mediator between you, and, between the guy and God, right? Mm -hmm. and that's what Paul says. I'm not the mediator between you and Jesus, right? He's baptizing in, in Jesus' name. So Jesus is the mediator to go to the Father God. Probably Crispus and Gaius mm. were trying to, you know, you know, to Yeah, they were they were probably it. saying saying like, you know, oh yeah, I was baptized by Crispus. I was baptized by Gaius, right? And they were saying these things, right? And they're like, uh, you know, I'm saved. I was baptized. You know, he baptized me, I'm saved. And Paul's saying, Yo, that's Jesus that's Christ is how you're baptized. It's believing on so they're preaching another gospel is what they're doing. Right, or they're they're yeah. forgetting, or they're they're abandoning their, their you know their faith in, or not understanding the scriptures, right? But yes, I see what you're saying. And again, they put a man between you and God, right? They put a man mm -hmm. like like Pope, right? They put someone. No, it's it's only Jesus Christ between you and the Father. Exactly. So let let's look at that. Uh, only in um uh, what were we looking at? Uh, uh oh yeah, we, you, we, yeah. It was oh, it's three two two. Okay, go ahead. Before you were talking about, you know, Mark group and Matthew group that they will have powers, right, to tread upon scorpions to do miracles. We don't do this because that's why we can. Okay, go on. Yeah, See, our group, Luke group, cannot do any physical miracles right now, but the other group will have the powers to do it. So yeah. So look at this. So Luke doesn't have this section about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Why? Because when Jesus was here, he was doing miracles, and they said he does these things because of Beelzebub. And then Jesus makes this comment, right? That um, a house divided cannot stand, right? How shall Satan stand if, you know, he, he's proven him wrong. But then he tells him, hey, you could blaspheme me. You could blaspheme the Father. But if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, you will never have forgiveness. But what did he do? He did a miracle, and they attribute it to Beelzebub. Now, Mark and Matthew, they will be here during tribulation. They will see miracles again, true miracles of God, and they have the ability to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, because they can say that is like the the the, the Pharisees that are left behind, the, these like Benny hands of the world. They're going to be like, no, that's of the devil. You know, that's the lies, the deception coming, right? They have the ability to attribute the, the works of God to Satan. But Luke's group doesn't. Why? Because they're not here for tribulation. Luke 21, 36. Pray always, right? That's why in Luke also it just says no one knows the day or hour. Only, only in Mark and Matthew it says that. Luke says pray always to be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. What are all these things? Well, read all of Luke 21. You realize that's tribulation. Tribulation starting coming. That's what it is. But only in Mark and Matthew can you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. So. When they also, when you hear these false prophets saying, if you speak against me, you're talking against God's anointed. No, you can, you test the spirits, right, by the word of God. And if it doesn't add up, you call them out. We are told to contend for the faith. Jude says contend for the faith. You call it out. So when they're saying, no, if you, if you talk about what I'm saying, just because it's not scripture, just because you talk about my vision, the word that God gave me, God gave me this word. If you talk against it, you're blaspheming the whole, no, they're a liar. And they're on the way to hell unless they repent. All right, go ahead, Yanni. You so, Mike, share some other stuff. See, so, Mike, how you said what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit means, right? Deny, you know, God's power. Mm -hmm. What will happen after they escape? Jesus will be here on earth for four days and he will do miracles. So, people will deny his power, Mike, and will mm -hmm. be in danger of condemnation because they blaspheme the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. If, so, guys, this is a very dangerous, mm -hmm. you know, situation of, you know, these 40 days because. You can put your soul into danger. And who are the people that will not believe Jesus, right? The Christians. So the Christians yeah. will blaspheme the Holy Spirit without yeah. knowing. And of course, yeah. right, all these Christians they will be preaching. They always preach about blaspheming yeah. the Holy Spirit, right? Whatever mm -hmm. they are saying. And they will be doing it because God wants, of course, to humiliate them. You know, and yeah. Not but, humiliate them. You know, to so, them, right? so to speak to that, in case anybody's new, um, Crazy. Uh, Crazy Jesus, mind, Jesus right? will be here as the sign of Jonah. That's why in Luke, there's the sign of Jonah. Jesus will be the sign of Jonah as Jonah was to the Ninevites. And in, there's no sign in Mark. 
because Luke is when tribulation starts. Like it's not when it starts. It's like the bride's gone. Jesus is here for 40 days as the son of man warning. He says, as Jonah was to the Ninevites, Jonah was a 40 day sign to the Ninevites that if thus they repent, they're going to be destroyed. Matthew, Jonah is a sign of three days and three nights in the belly of the beast. This is his cut off period halfway through trumpets when Satan's caught cast down oh, there's this period of time it's another deep teaching but it's at the end but there's nothing in mark and there's not a contradiction it's because there's no there's no sign given for mark's group the sign is jesus will be here as the son of man you, luke 11 right as jonah was then you go read luke 17 you'll realize that jesus says as in the days he says sh let me just go to it that way i don't have to you know let me go down here and i think it's luke 17 yep uh luke 17 24 for as lightning for as the lightning that lighteth out of one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. This day that's being spoken about here is the very last day. That's Matthew 28 when he comes and all power and authority is given to him. When he comes and feet down the Mount of Olives, when he cracks the mountain in half, that's that day. But first he must suffer many things to be rejected of this generation. For as in, for as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of of the son of man so the son of man will be here for days how many days 40 days because luke 11 sign of jonah says uh unclean spirit sign of Jonah. for as jonah was a sign unto the ninephites so shall jesus so shall, shall also the son of man be to this generation no this did not happen back then when jesus was here because when he was here for the the uh, the 40 days after right when it before his ascension he wasn't saying he was teaching and he was showing himself alive. He's showing proofs. He wasn't preaching that they were about to be destroyed. This is saying that uh, Jonah was saying, and yet 40 days you will be destroyed. It was exactly 40 days. World War III is happening, right? There's going to be this period of time that this is going to play out. So that's what Yanni was talking about. But if you don't have the differences in the gospel, you'll never know these things because people just always go to Matthew and preach from Matthew, not realizing that has nothing to do with us. They should be preaching out of Luke. Go ahead. Mike, go to John 7.20, right? Because what Alan has been told us, you know, has been telling us for so long. John 7 is the escape. John, uh, Alan and Ed, right? Don't forget, Ed and John 7, they, are, mm -hmm. they go together. So John 7 is the escape. And then we see John 7.20, they tell Jesus, you have a devil, right? Because he's here mm -hmm. for the four days. He's doing all this. Of course, he did a miracle. Uh, we will talk about this, if you want, Mike, later. But so they are denying god's power so these mm -hmm. people are blaspheming the holy spirit it's very scary mike right yeah people it's crazy now that you are think i'm thinking about realizing that you can be in danger of blaspheming the holy spirit during the 40 days and of course we don't we probably we want the 14th but we, because we have all these revelations but the other people that are christians they will be fooled or from their mm -hmm. own yeah. knowledge of the bible well that's because they don't read that's why mark says that's why when you read mark he's always worried about them not reading but uh that being said i think you know we're good i don't uh i hope you guys enjoyed it hopefully it makes sense if you have questions ask um but i, I plan to do more uh, some more of these kind of videos i still plan to do a live stream with alan uh to answer questions talk about his last video and just you know just to have fun where everybody's uh you know everybody can come in again um but there's some other cool teachings that I want to do, uh, you know, uh, well, I will get into that later. Um, but anyways, thank you guys so much, Yanni. Awesome, bro. Thank you for joining me. Mike, um, Mike if you want to go to only one last verse, right? If you want okay. to one, one more. Colossians, Colossians 2.15. Colossians, oh, because right. that came to my mind right when you were talking. And now I got this. See, this is for me, it's a very important one of my favorite verses. But now I really understood what it means because you were talking about Colossians 2.15. Okay, right here. It's up. Tell me you can see okay. it. Okay. Having spoiled principalities. Having spoiled the word, this verb, having spoiled means relieved of your duty, discharged. See, he relieved the principalities and powers, the fallen angels. He relieved them of their duties right on the cross. Like he fired them. And he <laughs> made the shoe of them openly means he made them an example. That's why God let Satan, you know, fall and all this stuff. So he can be an example what not to do right he's an example not to follow so that's and then he triumphs over them so now I understand exactly that it's like he's fine they were spoiled of course in in english it's a little bit you know the translation is a bit different but having spoiled for me you know like I, like i see it now it means discharge from relief from their duties it's, it's amazing right and then he yeah. made them example on the cross like uh, he ridiculed them 
he made them an example. Like, yeah, because what there was a scripture that says if they would have known, they wouldn't have put him to death, right? But they didn't know, yeah. and they thought they were they thought they were one up in him. But they he, were puffed up, right? And yeah, people see so. that's why people have to avoid to be puffed up and that they know everything and they are prideful and all this stuff. That that was the fallen angels. This exactly. made them fall. Okay, Mike, thank you very much, Mike. It was an amazing teaching, right? Because wh when you when you do a video, Mike, I, I, I study with you, right? I think I know, but no, when you study, you do the videos, Mike, uh, I can see more things. Thank you. Thank you very much. Brother. No, Awesome. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it too. And we will see you in the next one. God bless. God bless.